So today we're going to talk about creative prospecting and what to me, what creative prospecting is all about is doing something different. And so that's either using videos, GIFs, I've created wraps, and how do you exceed quota? So to start off, I think something that's really important to keep top of mind is it's not about us, it's about them. And that's just general rule of thumb in prospecting is it's not about you. And a lot of times what I see reps doing is making their messaging, their outreach about them and forgetting that it's all about the prospect and their pain. So if you're like, Kayla, I don't trust you. Why should I listen to you? Here's a little bit of data on personas that I've reached out to. I've gotten responses from. These are all C-suite at big companies. I've been BDRing for eight quarters. And in general, I've exceeded quota by 132%. I've been using video for the past six quarters and actually shout out to John Barros. And he was at my SKO when I first started as a BDR and recommended doing video. And that just started the journey. And I've sent over a thousand videos since April. So you really have to put out videos and it can't be something that you just try once and say, well, this didn't work for me. So here's something we come into all the time is research versus scalability. And that's really the, uh, I would say something that I know reps struggle with is, are you prospecting and doing deep research or are you sending really scalable videos? And so I think it's all about finding that medium. And so what I recommend is tearing out your prospects. And so those high level prospects, for me, that would be C-suite. I'm doing a lot of research with everyone else. I just need to be very intimate with their pain. So people say, well, where do I research? Where do I even start? Start on their LinkedIn, go to their about section, go to their featured section. What activity, what are they posting about? What's their current experience? Basically look at their profile and seeing if there are pieces that you can pick up that will help you to leverage in your messaging. I think what I've been talking about over and over already is what's most important is to understand your prospect's pain. If you don't understand your prospect's pain, how can you help them? And really knowing how your product ties back to that. So something that's really helpful, a really helpful exercise is figuring out the features in your product, the pain that your prospect is struggling with, how your product solves that pain, what business value it brings, and then who it, sol who it solves, what pain it solves for what persona. So here are eight types of outreach and there's obviously more outreach and I didn't mention cold calling, highly recommend cold calling. I do a lot of cold calling also, but I wouldn't say that's more on the creative end of things. So we'll start off with the most boring one to me, personalized email, always keep it short and sweet, provide value, create a quick and snappy title and use an interest CTA. So would this be worthwhile to explore or would this be worthwhile to have a conversation around? Gifting. So this is something we forget a lot of the time, but to give you background on this guy, he had the most creative LinkedIn bio I've ever seen. And he's talked about how he liked dad jokes. And so I had to send him a pair of socks that said, ain't no bad, ain't no bad joke like a dad joke. So. It's great to send gifts if you've done the research. What I would highly stay away or recommend staying away from is mass gifting. So that's just saying, hey, here's a Starbucks gift card if you'll take a meeting. Rather do research and send a highly targeted gift so they know that you have done your research and you actually are interested in them. Another thing to send is gifts. Why not? So what I recommend is common either objections or common reactions that you get to your emails or your outreach, come up with some gifts so that you can use a GIF instead of just sending a, a retort to what they're saying. And so it's something that's different and will catch their attention. I've had people who said, I usually don't reply to emails, but this GIF just kept popping up in my email inbox and I had to book a meeting. So 
Another thing we kind of forget a lot of times is voice messages exist on LinkedIn. I don't use this as much as I should, but I think it's a quick, easy way to send someone a short message. So for example, if I was reading an article, it'd be a lot, it'd make a bigger impact to send them a voice message than to send them a text, a message with text on LinkedIn. I think that's something that we forget on LinkedIn, people want very digestible content. So that's why videos, that's why gifts, that's why voice messages work. They do not want five paragraphs. They do not want five paragraphs anywhere, to be honest, but keep it short and sweet and in easy digestible ways. Video, and I hope Tyler that I did the sharing right. I may have to reshare my screen. <laughs> um, use Vidyard or use whatever tool you're using keep it under 90 seconds or ideally 60 seconds. So in general, my videos, when I'm not doing personalization, they're about 40 seconds. I know my pitch. I know what pain they're dealing with. I know how I can solve it. Use video pitch structure, which I will show you in a second of, if you don't have a script and you don't even know where to start, use this general structure and scale it out. Be looking at their LinkedIn. That's something I love to do. Although if you are selling into something specific where you're giving feedback on their website or there's something where you can point out something, I would highly recommend doing that. Just having your face, I would not recommend that. The reason why you're looking at their LinkedIn is because you are showing familiarity and you're showing that you couldn't create this video for anyone else. This is a given, but use good lighting. <laughs> be human. So the whole point of video is they know that you are authentic. They know that you're a human being. They know that you're not a robot and it's okay if you mess up. And to all my ladies out there, like you don't need a perfect makeup face, like just get on video and do it. And something I hear a lot of times is, oh, well, I'm going to get a haircut next week and then I'll start video. Start today. Why not start today? Make sure that you're at or above eye level. I know I'm cheating right now because I'm a little bit above, but you don't want to be looking down on your prospect and shout out Morgan Ingram because he commented on some of my videos. Morgan Ingram, if you're not following him, go connect with him on LinkedIn. He is just a huge believer in video and I've been following him for, I think, two years now. Don't use a lot of hand motions. So if you are a very animated person like me, you're already in your little bubble and you'll see you're already showing emotion and you want people to pay attention to your lips, what you're saying and your emotion rather than your hands. So disclaimer, there is a video from earlier on in my time at Domino where I do use my hands. So don't do that practice. And then lastly, use it throughout the sales cycle.